What's up everyone? We're here at PAX West 2023 here checking out a new game that was recently announced through the mix. Uh, you might have seen it. Rugrats. Forgot the subtext. Adventures in Gameland. Adventures in Gameland. Here today we have the developer, Thomas. Yeah, uh, Thomas Kynan, yeah, of the Mix Games. Why? Why the NAS? Why Why Rugrats? I mean, why not, right? Very why not? That's the question, <laughs> right? The whole idea with the Mix Games is that we want to make awesome retro games based on licensed IP that deserve to have awesome retro games. What was the inspiration behind choosing the Rugrats as, as a title that you guys wanted to work on? Uh, well, I mean, basically, it's something I grew up, I loved Rugrats as a kid. You know, you have the four main babies, it lends itself really well to that mechanic of switching out different characters. Um, you can play as like Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil. It's just something that I think lends itself well to having a, a good retro game. And to be honest, there, like, there really hasn't been that many good retro Rugrats games. I remember when I was 11 years old, the first time I ever got uh, motion sickness playing a game was the first Rugrats game on PlayStation and I ate a Big Mac right before. Worst, worst choice I could have oh, made. But I, I knew I knew then I could not play that game. So I, I got to like the mirror world and, and then I, I was done. That, those early 3D games yeah. could have been, they were a little rough back in the day. So, so what, what was the inspiration behind uh, the, the level design? Do you guys take episode, your favorite episodes and turn them into uh, levels? Or how, what, how does that work? Yeah, so there is a lot of reference to various episodes in there. Um, like, we also wanted to have really unique environments. So we've got sort of a, uh, we've got a jungle environment with the bosses, Thor, the gorilla. There's that famous episode where he's like, Thor, hungry, Thor, one, eat. <laughs> um, so we got that in there. There's the, we have a level in the kitchen where you go to Ice Cream Mountain, where you had that mini, mini golf ice cream mountain yes. level. Um, there's also a uh, sort of a, a fever dream level with uh, inside Tommy's imagination where you had that, the uh, Mr. Tippy sippy cup that chases after him as the boss. So there's a lot of iconic references like that. It's interesting because it's like a double dose of nostalgia, right? You have the Rugrats plus you have these NAS style graphics. There, there's also a, a level of challenge to it. Is that something you guys like ba are always balancing or always checking? How, how did that come into development? Uh, yeah, I think it just sort of almost comes naturally with the territory of an NES platformer. Um, just that genre of game kind of lends itself to being a little bit challenging, a little bit skilled, but at the same time we wanted to make it a little bit more forgiving than some say, uh, so say you fall into a hole, you don't die immediately, you'll respawn next to the hole, um, you'll lose a bit of health, but um, things like that, just some quality of life features to make it a little more modern, a little more forgiving, but uh, still give you that kind of retro feel and something that, you know, it dangles the carrot a little bit to, to keep you coming back for more rather than giving you everything all at once. And it has a local co-op mode. Is that something you guys wanted to start from the beginning? Like, it needs to have co-op, a game like this? Yeah, definitely. We From the very start, co-op was a big part of the design. Who's your favorite character to play as? Personally, I'd say Chucky. Um, he, he's probably personally my favorite baby. I just love, I like his character, just the anxiety riddled. Yeah. <laughs> like, we all have a little bit yeah. of Chucky yeah, exactly. inside of us. And, and really, he's kind of the biggest one of them all, but he's the, he's the scaredy cat. And I always <laughs> like that. And, but the, then they would have like these moments in the show where he would show his courage and you'd be so hyped. It's like like when Patamon digivolved into Angemon. Sorry, I'm going. <laughs> just, there's some epic moments in Rugrats that I think people write off, all right? And Chucky's finding of courage oh, yeah. is, is Chucky definitely. went down the slide. Uh, beautiful. Like, I mean, that was amazing. There's an HD mode where you can actually get those modernized graphics. Why did you guys choose that and, and how is that implemented into the gameplay? Yeah, so basically the game, it was programmed from the ground up to be a retro NES game. Um, but we wanted to have something where it's going to be released on modern consoles as well. We wanted to have something a little extra. So the, the HD mode is actually the exact same game. The code base is the same as the NES game, but we hired uh, um, Angry Metal, they're a great studio. Um, they're doing the uh, graphics for the HD version of the game. So it's actually a toggle so you can live swap between HD and 8-bit uh, mode. 8-bit mode, you can like we, you can turn on scan lines, make it look like a CRT. It's it's uh, it's it's going to be really nice looking. Uh, we just we wanted to go all out for the uh, for the full for the um, the modern console package and just have something that could feel modern and feel retro at the same time. 
And to close out, how, what are your thoughts on this this kind of reemergence of old games becoming uh, cool again and, and getting this kind of second life over here? I mean, personally, I love it. Um, I, it's what I grew up with. If I was to go back and tell my 10-year-old self I was going to be developing NES games professionally, I mean, I, it's amazing. So, I mean, I could tell my 30-year-old self that and I would have thought. It's amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> do we have a release date? Do we have anything? Uh, I'd say Q1 next year, early 2024. Early 2024. There'll be trailers. Yes, keep keep a sure. lookout for the trailers. Thank you so much, and thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Sorry, are you recording? Are you recording? I'm recording. Oh, okay. Okay. Would you rather have me stand here or there? The, oh, here for sure. Let's do that. Yeah. So you're not like Yeah. What's up, guys? We're back. PAX West 2023. I have with me today... I am Alina Allenbeggy, and I'm the marketing director at Limited Run Games. And... I'm Randy Linden, and I work on the Carbon Engine at Limited Run Games. Randy, the Carbon Engine is a very interesting software that's coming into play. We've been hearing a lot about it mm -hmm. and on the retro side of things. Can you explain, uh, just kind of pitch, what Carbon Engine is? Carbon Engine is a software technology that is basically emulation that allows us to take retro games, older games, and bring them forward to newer systems so you can play them just as if you were playing them on the older systems, but now you can play them on the newer systems. Uh, we can also do things like enhancements, so things like um, save states or rewind. Uh, we can uh, sometimes enhance the graphics. We can do all sorts of neat things because we're doing emulation, um, but it allows us to recapture all of those old great games and bring them forward to the modern consoles. And what's kind of your ties with this retro, dare I say, emulation? Uh, <laughs> what, are your, what are your ties to this whole industry? I got my start uh, about 40 years ago when I was 13. Um, I'm most uh, well known for an emulator called Bleem, which was a PlayStation emulator uh, for uh, PC. Uh, I also wrote an emulator for uh, the Amiga called The 64 Emulator that lets you run Commodore 64 titles on your Amiga. Back when when those when the emulators were coming up and, and becoming uh, popularized, what encouraged you that this software needed to be made? Because in my head, when I when I used uh, any type of emulation, it would be I would rip my disc I, and then use those to play on my PC, just so I didn't have to ruin my disc. But other people would steal software and stuff like that. But in your head, creating these stuffs, what what was your end goal? What what, what did you want? Um, Originally, this goes back to the 64 emulator on the Commodore 64 and on the Amiga. Commodore had the Commodore 64, and then they had the Commodore 128, which was the next progression of the machine. But they didn't have a Commodore 256. The next machine that they came out with was the Commodore Amiga, and the Amiga was incompatible with the Commodore 64. But there were millions and millions of people who had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies of software that they would want to be able to use on their new machine. So I came up with the concept of basically allowing you to emulate an older machine on a newer technology. And that's how I got my start. So 40 years later, Carbon Engine, in your head, how has that come full circle? Are we coming full circle? We are coming full circle. That's exactly what it is. Um, back uh, emulating old machines, um, Nintendo 8-bit, I've written some Nintendo 8-bit games, I did uh, Doom for the Super Nintendo, um, uh, so I've done a number of games on older machines and it is sort of coming around full circle because people really love the gameplay, not so much the graphics, um, it's not that they don't like the graphics, they just don't really care about the graphics because the gameplay was so good in those older games and the Carbon Engine allows us to bring forward all that nostalgia onto the newer consoles that everybody has. Hey, are, do you find it interesting in yourself that gamers are now coming back to older titles? They, they don't just want older titles remastered, they want new titles that are based off of older 
game, you know, they, they want new experiences, but in that retro design. Is that interesting to you? Is it that... is, it is. A good example is something like uh, the Jurassic Park uh, product, which yeah. we've just announced. Jurassic Park, but it's sort of uh, a variety of the Jurassic Park games that you get to play on your latest console uh, with enhancements. So you've got save states, you've got rewind, which is really f fantastic because if you're, for example, you're you're fighting uh, one of the dinosaurs and you accidentally get killed, you can just hit the rewind button <laughs> and it, it's like a VCR, it just rewinds, you go back and you can try it again. And so the, the enhancements that we can do with the technology these days really allow us to to improve the gameplay um, while retaining the same feel that that, that same um, innate uh, nostalgia that people had when they had the games originally. Lena, with Limited Run Games and the Carbon Engines, the partnership that is there, what's it like on the Limited Run side? Are you guys excited? Do you guys have uh, idea, more ideas to come? What, what, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of Carbon Engine games in the pipeline. We, we announced Toomba, we announced Gex, which are two games I'm super, super excited about. I, I, I think uh, something that we talk about a lot, just like in the office too, is like emulation at its core and the almost the mission statement of Carbon Engine is to preserve these games because there's just hundreds to thousands of games on these retro consoles. They're not on any stores. The barrier of entry to play them is incredibly hard because you have to have this old hardware. You have to buy it, you have to plug it all in. Most people aren't gonna do that. So to us, it, it means a lot to, to take some of these older games, in some cases, games that never even came to the US, like River City Girl Zero, mm -hmm. which was never localized. So we got to bring that game over, localize it, and all these new people can experience it for the first time. That's super important to us. And Randy's humble, so he won't say it, but he is legendary in the emulation community. <laughs> He's, he is an emulation god, and we're super happy to have him on here, and it's a, it's a really exciting project. Is that, is that, is that what Limited Run kind of kind of champion? It's like, we wish someone would do it, oh, okay, we'll just do it ourselves kind of thing? That's that's basically it, and, and our founder, Josh Fairhurst, um, not only does he come from a game developing background, so he understands like how much it means to have your game playable. Like you can own it, you can play it. It it, it means a lot. But he's he's also a super nerd. So he's like, there's tons of games where he's like, man, like this only came out in Japan. I really want to play it. This is awesome. Like everyone would just go crazy. Like it, it's just the right people, the right place to like make this happen. Randy, is there a game in in your head that's kind of like your your white buffalo, the one that <laughs> the one that you want? The one that I want. Um, you know, I think the, I think the fact that emulation has become uh, something that is so common now that some of my favorite games are back from the old Nintendo days, like Super Mario Brothers 3, where you can play that on your Switch with Nintendo Switch Online. So I think the fact that emulation has become part of today's commonplace usage in, in gaming is uh, a testament to the fact that we're moving in the right direction. What yeah. a great answer. Yeah. Oh, and just to <laughs> add to that, it's it, it's kind of crazy now because, like, you know, back in the early days of, of emulation, I feel like it was kind of a dirty word and, like, a lot of the platform holders, like, weren't about it. But now, you know, PlayStation uses emulation, Nintendo uses emulation, and they're really embracing it. And really, it's a good thing for the industry as a whole, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm really excited for what you guys have coming, so keep on checking out Noisy Pixel. We're definitely going to be covering all these announcements and these titles, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Follow Noisy Pixel. <laughs>